everyone to another Defenage IG Live. I really enjoy these interviews and we've had some great guests. This topic is get gorgeous for the holidays, which I think we all need a little bit of help after the year we've just gone through. Thank God it's almost over. So it's my pleasure to introduce board certified dermatologist, Dr. Stephen Swankel, who has an amazing full service practice in beautiful Los Gatos that I just learned was 45 uh, miles or so outside of San Francisco. So in Dr. Swingle's practice, there is another dermatologist, Dr. Lindsay Yeh, and a facial plastic surgeon as well, which I didn't know until I looked it up today. Dr. Sudi Roy, so you can get your acne under control, have your neck tightened, plus get your skin lasered and body contoured all under one beautiful roof. <laughs> Um, Dr. Swangle has been one of my go-to derms for a long time. When I want the scoop on something new and exciting, he's got the answers. He is up to date, cutting edge, always into new technology and really knows his science about skincare. So before we begin, and I hope you're gonna ask him a lot of questions, I just wanna remind everyone that we'll be giving away a gorgeous Definage Lux kit, $507 value. This is the gift you want under your tree or next to your menorah or whatever else you celebrate. <laughs> uh, one lucky winner is gonna get this beautiful gift. It's, it is the holiday gift of your dreams. Um, I got one last year for the holidays and I loved it. It was elegant and it makes you feel amazing. Um, it's been featured in all the exclusive and best of the best 2020 holiday gift guides. So we're not alone in loving it, and it's a coveted gift for the season. So to enter, just to reiterate, tune into our IG Live, like this post, follow Definage Skincare, follow Refined MD, that's Dr. Swingle's Insta, and tell us how you get gorgeous for the holidays. Tag a friend or a few friends. Uh, in the comments, the more the merrier. This giveaway is open to all legal residents of the US and will close on Tuesday, December 8th at 11 59 59 p.m. PST, West Coast time. And the winner will be chosen at random and announced on Wednesday, December 9th. So you have until the, the 8th to get it going and may the, may the best person win and you're gonna enjoy it. So Stephen, let's talk to you. Um, it's really nice to have you. I was so delighted when you were able to come on. I know how busy you are, and I had no idea you had this other thing going on. Well, bravo to you. I wanted to start by asking you how you came to the Definage line uh, with Age Repair Defensins and how you brought it into your practice. Can you explain a little bit about the technology to our guests? Because I think you have a really good take on it. Well, first of all, my exposure to it was at a meeting in Marina Del Rey. Oh, wow. and it was the first meeting where they actually were um, repping it at the oh. um, you know the trade uh, section, and uh, I think I met Nicholas at that point, and he said, "Would you like to try this while you're here?" And I said, "Sure, yeah, I'll try anything once." And so I just you know started using it um, for the weekend that was there, and I have to honestly tell you, after three days, I looked in the mirror and I said, "I I see a difference in my skin." Uh -huh. So with that, I just said, I, "I've got to have this in my practice." Um, you know, at first the price point was a little bit scary for people. It's it's like some other products that are, you know, high, higher price but um, really medical grade level of activity. And so we use the um, the travel kit a lot just to oh, let them buy buy the uh, well the three day starter kit and just um, sell it. We sold it to them for twenty dollars because I always have said you give people free product. Uh, they say thanks. They put it in the drawer and forget about it. But if you've made an investment, you use it. And we said. Um, once you try it, I guarantee you're going to love this stuff. Come back and we'll give you $20 off the, the, the system. Okay. Awesome. So that's kind of how we got yeah. the ball rolling. And um, that ball, I have to say, has been rolling ever since. People wow. just love um, Defenage. And I think the real issue with Defenage is it's based on a peptide called Defensin, which is released by our body when skin is injured. So it's a kind of a, a basic uh, defensive me uh, mechanism to uh, support skin healing and repair. But the difference is you're not actually trying to stimulate old cells in the epidermis. You're actually um, um, turning stem cells on that are kind of quietly resting in your hair follicles. And those stem cells then actually migrate up into your uh, epidermis and totally repopulate your epidermis with brand new cells. So it's not just a stimulation, it's a total replacement and rejuvenation. And I think that's why, you know, if someone uses it for a month, yeah, you get they, hooked. Will be, they will get hooked. It's just mm -hmm. amazing to mm -hmm. see how your skin changes. 
Well, I mean, um, that's what we're looking for, isn't it? It's worth the price point if you can actually get a result. So many times we, you know, pick something up at a, at a counter or a drugstore online that you don't see anything from. I'm sure you get that from your patients all the time. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of other really great medical grade products, but those are ones you have to kind of believe in them and hang in there because it can take two to three months to start seeing, you know, a change in results. Where Definage to me was a slam dunk because usually within a week, people are saying, wow, I really see a difference already. In fact, wows you, right? Yes, it, it really wows people. It's not amazing. I mean, I, we have a lot of um, a lot of people talking about this, a lot of buzz about Definage right now. So we're very excited about it. And I right. know you, you've been you've tried out the new Big uh, Perfection neck cream. Yes. How do you like I handed, that? Uh, oh. I had a few free samples sent to me and handed those out to people who were already on other uh, neck creams. And again, the response is has been, "I like this one better." Um, and what's kind of unique is they use different concentrations of defense in each one of these products because what they found is there are certain specific concentrations that seem to work best. Um, before we had the neck cream, I would say to people, no, you're putting it on your face, extra pump, and just take it down on your neck. Mm -hmm. And again, people got good results, but with that, they were uh, always kind of giving me feedback about, oh, this is getting a little expensive because, you know, you're going through product a little faster. So the neck cream allows you to kind of specifically treat the neck and that again helps with that fine crepey change to the skin um, better than um, any product I know. Yeah, I, I think that the neck cream is amazing. I've rarely used neck cream um, and I feel like it's the forgotten area, right? We, we kind of stop here typically, but this is your face too and even your decollete and it's really a lovely product. I see a question. Um, if you are oily and non-reactive sensitive, can you use this alongside a regular use of acids? Uh, yes, you can. Um, you can also use it with uh, Retin-A. Uh, the, the most important thing, if you're using other active ingredients, other serums, for example, a vitamin C serum, um, a Retin-A or retinoic acid of some sort, uh, you always want to put that on first. And then the Daphnage goes over, right over the top of it. I always say, think of your Daphnage as the icing on the cake. You do everything that you need to do, then the Daphnage goes on. And the only thing that really goes on after Daphnage is either more moisture if you need it like at nighttime or your sunscreens. So you put the sunscreen after Daphnage. Is that your recommendation? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. it's good to yeah. know. I've been doing that backwards, but I'll, I'll check next, <laughs> next morning. <laughs> a look at your website of course because i'm always curious in new things and i wanted to see what you were what you were up to and i i'm really excited about some of the new things you brought in so i i noticed a few hot new treatments that i'm familiar with but i thought it'd be mm -hmm. interesting for you to talk about how they're working because it looks like you just brought them into the practice one is the neo by btl aesthetics mm -hmm. which is pretty amazing and moxie by cyton is is another device that i know about but i haven't tried it yet so can mm -hmm. you tell us what's your nickel tour of those two exciting launches and how do they fit? Yeah, well, the very, a very quick uh, discussion about uh, MSculpt, which was the original system developed by BTL to actually to, to uh, tighten your abs, your glutes. They now have applicators that do biceps, triceps, deltoids. Um, and the, the issue with the MSculpt was it's high energy EMF that stimulates your muscle on the other side of the synapse. So you may say, well, I'm doing my exercises at, at the club or at home, but you're actually um, stimulating the muscle through a synaptic impulse. This actually treats it on the other side. So the muscle gets more stimulation than you can imagine. It's, it's like, you know, one abdominal M sculpt is um, equivalent to probably 10,000 stomach crunches. So it's, it's just amazing what it does. And it, with the original, what they said was, well, the muscles are actually contracting so aggressively and so violently that it actually runs out of glycogen. It's, you know, the source of energy for muscle and pulls fat out of the adjacent fat. So they said, so as a secondary issue, you're actually going to be reducing fat. Well, they never were able to actually demonstrate that very well. Conceptually, it made sense, but they weren't able to demonstrate. So they never had FDA clearance for that. So the MSculpt Neo actually then um, basically t uh, lays on top of the uh, high e energy EMF uh, radio frequency. So this is like, um, you know, Vanquish or Exilus where you're actually throwing a lot of heat into the skin. 
And the FDA actually approved and cleared this for reduction of fat as well as building muscle. So for people who kind of got that little bit of extra padding they want to get rid of, and certainly everyone needs to have strong core, um, is, this allows us to say, hey, in four treatments uh, over about a one month period of time, you can see up to 30% reduction in abdominal fat. So this kind of allows people to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. And um, we've just kind of gotten started, but already people are lining up, you know, and signing up for the, the uh, four treatments in a row. Uh, it's not meant to be for people who have no fat. I had a couple of people recently where I said, yeah, your abs would be great. You have no Maybe in San Francisco, <laughs> LA. <You're> right. <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of M sculpt very quickly. Um, I personally have done it. Um, and uh, I've lost, well, with the original one, I lost about two inches off my waist and it's stayed off. I've only had one M sculpt Neo, and uh, I'd have to say it's it's a more aggressive treatment. So it's it's uh, you know you've had a treatment at the end of that half hour, but uh, it's doable. Uh, I think you also asked about Moxie. Moxie is a new um, thulium laser that that uh, Cyton Lasers out of Palo Alto has developed, yes. and there are other thulium lasers on the market. Uh, one a good example is uh, uh, Clear and Brilliant. They're, they're Primea, Handpiece actually is a Thulium, and then LazMD out of, of uh, South Korea is also um, in that same wavelength. Uh, what Moxie does is it actually allows you to adjust the, the, uh, the density and the um, power beyond what LazMD can do so that we're doing a more aggressive fractional resurfacing to your skin. Hmm. Uh, and what I like to do is actually uh, combine uh, Moxie uh, with uh, a BBL treatment. BBL is also a cyton system. So BBL is getting rid of your browns, helping to kind of push the reds away. And then we work on texture, pore size, and overall appearance of the skin by just layering a moxie right over the top of it. Uh, it's fairly new technology. There are not a lot of systems out there yet. So it's, it's difficult to find offices that, that are uh, carrying this. Um, another fun thing is that the BBL, which is something I love, and you know, probably you've had, had them done. Oh, I've had it. It's it, great. It gets the browns out. It's just, yep. and it keeps your skin from aging. Series of um, uh, yep. it's a treatment that you want to go back for, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's again, a, it's a wow event. Um, mm -hmm. But people kind of see their face and they say, hey, can you do my neck and chest? Yeah, I can do that. But then they go, okay, can you do my, my back? And you're like, oh, God, I don't, I don't have time and energy to do an entire <laughs> back. It, it's a stamp, you know, you're stamping. But what they've done is they've now come out with a system that actually is a rolling system so that you can actually power through a treatment in you know, record time to treat you know, large areas like chest and back. And we're actually doing a study for them right now to uh, demonstrate the efficacy of this, this treatment. Uh, the original system, you had to kind of learn how to pace yourself because you had to pace with the pulsing. And what, again, this is amazing, but what they have done is they've actually come with a system that is reading your, your speed and pulsing with your speed. So it's basically allowing you never to over-treat, never to under-treat, which I think is amazing. And that's the one we're going to be studying uh, to show the efficacy of that, that particular system. So both, yeah, a lot, lot of fun new stuff. I mean, it's exciting that there's so many new things coming out in skincare and technology, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, but it's still rolling along. Aesthetics is still going, yeah. people still want treatments without a doubt. Right. And if they, yeah. even in the, I think in the pandemic when, Maybe, unfortunately, some offices were closed. I mean, it was the skincare that got us through it, right? It, you yes. Know, more on your skincare if you couldn't get to your plastic surgeon or your dermatologist. I'm sure you had that with your own patients. Well, you know, I always kind of laugh and say what really saved us through the two to three months of, of really office closure was <laughs> Botox. That oh. <laughs> people, will, people will kick and scream for their Botox, you know, no matter what. And you know, Botox brought people in and I have a huge, you know, group of people who just are. Yeah. When you're used to having injectables, it, especially with toxins, like you don't want to give it up. It's like hair color. You just don't want to give it up. So we have a few really interesting questions. And one is, if you're oily, can you use uh, Definage along with acids? I think you answered well, similar. We answer that question, yeah. Now you could do, a, for example, you could do a salicylic acid uh, wash, maybe a salicylic acid um, toner, 
and just do daffodils right over the top. Um, you don't want to be aggressively exfoliating, but even with, with this, um, I use Defnage very rapidly after a, um, an invasive skincare treatment where I'm injuring the skin and you know, mm. punching holes in the skin and, and cooking the skin because, again, think about it, def uh, defenses are there when the skin is injured. So yeah. my feeling is I've just injured your skin. The best thing for your skin is Defnage to make it heal fast. So how often do you do that? Like if you were doing a microneedling or a, more, a little more invasive procedure like that, how soon would you let patients use Definage? And is it, is it the bio serum you would use or what's your protocol post-treatment? Um, I, I like to have them actually pre-treat because again, uh -huh. that gets, you know, their skin is, is moving. Smart. And I think you know, skin that's moving is going to respond to injury better and heal faster. But um, generally like with um, the Moxie treatment, the LazeMD microneedling, all those little um, penetrations have sealed by the next day. So I just put them on the, the serum immediately the next day, probably hold off on the um, barrier balance cream for another day. Um, I, I learned very early on that barrier balance cream on raw skin burns. So, you know, never try to put it on, you know, freshly injured skin. Good to know. Note to sell. I, I, the, yeah. the serum is a product. I love it. I yeah. just, the silky, nice feeling and you can use it pretty quickly, but that's a question that comes up a lot, um, certainly because we're doing so many more ablative and deeper treatments. I have another- And to understand too, the real activity is in that serum. The, the barrier mm -hmm. balance cream is really designed to basically create a seal, a barrier of the skin to allow that defense and to actually penetrate right through. So it's very important that you use the two together, but the, the barrier balance has really very little activity in it. It's, it's that serum that's, that's just loaded with the defenses. Yeah, I, I love I love the serum. Um, another question we had from the audience. So with the neck treatment, and this is a good question. I never thought of this. Here's, here's a woman after my own heart. So would you do better and get a better result if you used the neck treatment on the face? Uh, no, actually, I, I would say if you want to actually, you know, kind of minimize the products in your in your cabinet and just rely on one, I would just stick with the the barrier balance and um, the BioComplete serum and just take what you're using on your face down in your neck. So you would do the barrier balance cream mm -hmm. on the right, and you'd use the serum instead of using the neck cream. Well, I guess then you can use the neck cream on on the. Uh, on the neck, and I would I would think you can extend it to the decollete. Do your patients know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, in, the issue there is that the uh, barrier or the uh, BioComplete serum, the original one for the face, is only one ounce. So realize that you know, that's a limited amount. Now, they are coming out with a bigger um, product. I think yeah. it's an ounce and a half, so it will give you a little more coverage. 50%. Um, more, yeah. I think it's but, 40, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if someone wants to keep it simple, and I'd have to say, you know, most women will, you know, women want to have a neck cream and an eye cream, and, you know, they, they want to do it all. So um, for those, I say, yes, they, they have both, and get them both, and you will love them. Um, but men, for example, uh, oh. you got to keep it, you got to keep it simple. And if you give too many steps to a man, they won't do it. So I just say, hey, let's just do what's for your face and put okay. it down on your neck. That's what I do, frankly. Yeah, and do you use the Defenage men's men's kit for your patients? Um, yeah, we, we certainly sell it. Um, you know, again, some, a lot of times people just want the basics, and I'm just like, okay. Um, I also find, too, that I have people, um, well, a couple groups, um, women who tend to be acne prone. Uh, I often will start them off on the, uh, the triad size because within a couple days, if you are acne prone, uh, you may find that you break out with this. And, you know, that results in a, a return on full-size products. So I always, you know, have them start off with the smaller mm -hmm. size and say, try it and just see how you do. And if you don't break out in a few days, you're okay. Um, so that's an important group to kind of um, separate out. Yeah. And then I don't, I don't think it's a great product for people who, well, it's, it's a good product, but it's not designed to treat dry skin. So if you have extremely dry skin, you're going to have to supplement uh, Daphnage for you know, just dry skin issues. Understood. I have a, another question here. Is it safe for under the eye? I prefer to use one for all if it's safe. I assume um, you're talking about the barrier cream? Well, here's what I tell people about that. Because again, she's saying, can I just use one product everywhere? 
Um, the um, Barrier Balance Cream kind of off gases a little bit. In fact, some people comment that there's a, a slight odor to it. So I just say, don't use that around your eyes um, because you could kind of almost burn and kind of make you tear a little bit. So I just have them take the, the uh, BioComplete Serum, just type the lash line under their eyes if they want to keep it simple. Or, I mean, there's also the eye repair. Yes, the yeah, eye repair I, is great. What I like about it is I think the, the, the way it was created with the gold tip, it's very soft and smooth and cooling. So I feel like it really helps like with bags, which unfortunately lack of sleep can cause all the time. Here's another question. What ingredients are likely to cause breakouts? So not necessarily only in Definage, but in general, what do you, what do you tell your patients to avoid? Um, I think anything that where you create occlusion to the skin. So I think that's why the, the barrier balance cream probably occludes um, oil <laughs> glands and just kind of, you, you get plugged up. Makes and sense. Uh, we, we see that after any sort of laser treatment where people are trying to use heavier products to, you know, to protect the skin. And those acne prone people will break out around their mouth. Uh, it's very, you can treat it very easily, but um, you don't want to be creating the problem if you, oh, if, you don't, if you don't have to. Do you have a lot of patients asking about maskne? I mean, it seems like everybody's complaining oh, about it. Uh, I don't, yes. and I get a little tested, right? It's so annoying. But yeah, it really is. But I, I think a couple, I think a couple things there is um, not to over moisturize under your mask because you're then putting, you know, occlusive stuff on and covering it up. And the other thing is to make sure your masks are really clean. So don't, if it's a, a disposable paper mask, don't oh. reuse it the next day. If you have reusable ones, you want to actually take them home and wash them because um, body oils get on these masks. And so it ends up, if you reuse a reusable mask, you're, you're putting dirt on your face. So, you know, make sure that uh, reusable ones washed every day. I, I, I wear them once, cotton, and I, sometimes I double mask, especially when I get on a plane, I double mask. Yeah. And it yeah. makes me, I don't know if it's helping me, but it makes me feel much more secure. And I wash my, my reusable masks after every washing with a little detergent, even sanitizer. It, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. But I, can I think the more, the higher the risk, the, the riskier the exposure um, uh, environment, double masking is very good. Also where I, you know, either if you don't wear glasses, just get a pair of clear glasses or even a, uh, a clear mask yeah. and wear that. Yep. Especially you start looking like an, you start looking like an alien, but better alien than an ICU bed. I'm over it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I do not want to end up on a respirator. I hope, I hope everyone's paying attention to Dr. Swangle's advice on this because there unfortunately are a lot of mixed messages, but Masking is here to stay and it's still pretty important. Um, another question here about postpartum, postpartum skin, excuse me, redness, pigmentation, melasma. What are, what are your advice for that type of skin condition and how soon after giving birth? I'm sure you have a lot of patients who come to you with mommy, mommy tips that are needed. Right. But the only, only products we don't like to see lactating women use are retinols and hydroquinones. I think the peptide products are fine. Um, the the uh, my feeling is you can pretty much start them, you know, as soon as you're able to start getting into a routine again. Because I, I think there are several months where routines do not occur. So you may have to just kind of bag it for a while. Um, but I think it's just there are a few products that really aren't recommended uh, during lactation. Uh, do I think any of it's high risk? No, but you know we just have to be cautious and realize. Um, that we just, we don't go there. I think it's even more important when you're pregnant that you just want to make sure that, you know, the fetus is just, uh, is, is protected and uh, as it's kind of, your body's as pure as you can make it during that period of time. Treat a woman who's postpartum and breastfeeding the same as you would someone who's pregnant? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, the only, again, the only two things I really um, stopped doing is, you know, the, tret the tretinoins, uh, hydroquinones, um, we, we don't do Botox, we don't do injectables during pregnancy, yeah. but, um, you know, basically if they do want to come in and do Botox, um, we just ask them to, um, throw away the breast milk of that day because, you know, Botox really locks into the, the, um, the nerve endings very quickly. So, uh, and is there a great risk? Probably not, but we just say throw away the, the milk for that day 
and then, you know, and, and pump the day before so you've got a little extra in store. And uh, so I'll even do a, you know, someone who's um, um, given birth and wants to get back on her Botox, you know. Fair enough. I mean, I would, I would hate to make that kind of a mistake. I'd feel guilty for the rest of my life, right? Yeah. Um, another yeah. question. What are ret why are retinols dangerous to use on your face if you're breastfeeding? Well, again, a retinol is uh, actually a carcinogen or teratogen. So the issue is, to what extent do you absorb the product? And to what extent is there uh, exposure uh, or a secretion in the breast milk? And I have to honestly tell you that the, most of these have not really been thoroughly studied um, because all these um, tests that they have to do to, to comply with FDA regulations, you have to take it to completion and you have to pay for all this. So um, the bulk of these um, questions have never really been fully answered mm -hmm. um, because they're not willing to pay the price to actually demonstrate whether or not it's safe. So what that boils down to is they just put on the label, not recommended for pregnancy. It's not that it's it's you know directly been shown to cause problems, but it's just not recommended. No, so, except for isotretinoin, right? Oh, absolutely. Isotretinoin is definitely a, a teratogen. And no, if um, you're pregnant, or even I mean, even don't you don't they have to have a pregnancy test before you put them on them on? Before and once a month, and there's a very tight uh, sort of of pass off where you have to get the test, and it has to be uh, cleared. Then the pharmacy gets the, the okay, and then the drug is released for another month. Interesting aside, I was in Buenos Aires, um, and a good friend of mine was traveling and had pretty bad acne. And we uh, had to go to a pharmacy for some reason. Oh. And I had to, to basically finagle prescriptions. I was having stomach problems. But I looked, and there was isotretinoin on the shelf behind the, the uh, pharmacist. And I said, is, is that my prescription? He said, no, it's not. And I said, well, it's, you know, it's a teratogen. I mean, how about, and he said, well, look, it says right here on the box, not to be used during pregnancy. So in Buenos Aires, you can go up and just buy it. Isn't that amazing? Probably cheap as dirt, right? But yeah, but isn't it true in Mexico? I mean, you can get an, any kind of retinoid yeah. on the counter. In I think Mexico is at least a tra isotretinoid. <laughs> it's not part of the, the uh, over-the-counter products. Right, yeah. Ooh, that's like a dirt. Yeah. Worst nightmare, right? My God, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, so tell us about the new fillers that are coming out. I know you're a big injector. I'm sure mm -hmm. audience hear about what's new and exciting. What are you liking right now? Well, um, actually, one that I've really been liking is a product called Versa, um, particularly for the lips. And um, the reason, we're yeah, here. The reason huh? for anyone who who just joined us, and we're talking about getting gorgeous for the holidays. Please, please tell the audience because they may not know ex specifically that brand. It's a little on, under the radar still. Yeah, Versa is a um, hyaluronic acid out of Canada. Prolinium was, is the manufacturer. And it's specifically designed to be a, a relatively um, fluid, but yet viscous enough to give you plumping. And I love it in the lips. And what I, I, I'm not a big Southern California, like give people lips that are going to explode sort of guy. So I like to make, a, make them look you know, gently plump and moist. And, you know, it's amazing. People come in two weeks later after uh, Versa and they'll take their mask off and say, look at my lips, I love it. So it's just a really great way to get a soft, moist lip. Um, the wrestling group has come out with a new product called Kiss, mm -hmm. which uh, obviously was specifically made for, for lips. Uh, a little firmer, a little firmer product. So you'd have to want a relatively firm lip. Um, and the other one we've been exploring, I'm not sure if I'm um, where I am on this, is uh, a new uh, product line called Revance is, is coming yes. out. And they actually kind of, what, they're I, trying to simplify the, the injectables. And they kind of have a one, two, three, four, and that's all they have. So no fancy names, you know, and the, the one is very done, fluid. And it only two, yeah. three, four for tax on? Well, right now the only ones in the U.S. are two, three, four. Right. But they want to bring one in as well, which is a super fluid, thin product for fine lines. And um, and that's apparently just kind of held up with some FDA uh, approval. But it's um, available all over the world. Yes. Yeah. And, I, you know, the pro what my office is kind of dealing with, since there are f three doctors and one nurse practitioner, all of whom do quite a few injectables, is do we need them all? <laughs> and so we're kind of having a um, kind of a very philosophical, practical discussion about, 
So if you had to have, you know, specific ones that you cannot live without, what, what are the ones you cannot live without? And it's, we're ha it's a difficult conversation because everyone has little favorites. Um, yep. But we're trying to make it so that we can get through product quickly and you know, not have product you know, just sitting on shelves. Um, so I think at some point we'll actually kind of probably um, kind of narrow things down to the products that we just love and want to use. I don't see how they do it in Europe. They've got 200. It's amazing. Um, it's anyway. I have a couple of very good ones. Do you know when Revance Doxy will be FDA approved? I, I hear like, as we speak, what, what do you think? Oh, no, no, <laughs> we, we had, we've done two demos. I have um, product given to me to, to you know, to try yeah. and it, it's for, it's for sale. It's, it's coming, right? Or it's, is it it's it's for sale? Yeah, I mean, we we can buy it and, and offer it, but um, right now I don't think there's a lot of PR on the part of Revance to make people aware of it. Um, so I've been writing about it for I, I, five years at least, and it's exciting to see it finally come to fruition because it does mm -hmm. have a lot of a lot of qualities that could be really interesting. I mean, the longevity. Yeah. Is well, also just the the the, the uh, structure of the molecular structure of this product is interesting. So. They're not relying on cross-linking um, to create stability um, and, and um, plumpness of the product. They actually look uh, relying on long-term strands of HAs to kind of give it that stability without having to cross-link. So kind of interesting concept. Um, I'm just not sure if I'm on that bandwagon yet. Well, it's, I mean, I love it that we have more to choose from. I mean, in Europe, ever since I've started going there, which is over 20 years ago, um, when I was in the, started in the aesthetics business on my own, I could not believe. I used to keep a list of all the fillers. And then one day I just gave up. Like, oh, this is ridiculous because every, yeah. oh, I mean, it's crazy. But some of them were really, quite, I'm not a big fan of the, some of the permanent fillers who really, that really cause damage now. So mm -hmm. I think now we have it pared down, but it is getting confusing, I think, for consumers, which is, why you need to go to someone like Dr. Swangle, who is going to explain it to you and is really up to date and very cutting edge, because not everybody knows the differences between these characteristics. Like Versa is not widely known, I feel. Is that mm -hmm. true? Asked what the name of, of the HA that Dr. Swangle mentioned. It's called Versa, V E R S A. But you're not going to find it in every practice. Well, a couple of neat things about Versa, Wendy, is if you've seen mm -hmm. the box, it's the no. sexiest box. Is it really? Uh, of all. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a sleek black box. It looks like something oh. out of a jewelry store. And the other thing that's kind of nice is it has uh, 1.2 cc's of product. So you've got a little extra uh, bit to, you know, to do that, that touch up and just kind of that little extra <laughs> fill. Nice. And I hear that the price point is, is kind of consumer friendly. Is that true? Um, yeah, they're they're all about the same, okay. but there are some that, there are some that are getting really expensive. Uh, you know, uh, I won't name names, but one company in particular is, is you know every year their price goes up, and um, it's a hard year to have a price increase. I think for consumers. Yeah. And you know, injectables are a little bit of a consumer-driven, uh, very competitive product. So if you've got someone who's opening up a small office and it's an injectable RN under the auspices of a, a doctor they can keep those prices low. Um, my biggest concern is that I've always kind of say, do people know where they're injecting? Uh, you know, because injectables have issues too. Do you know how to use a cannula? Do you know where the blood vessels are? Right, we've all seen it. Yeah. I mean, even though yeah. these are safe products, if you don't know what you're doing, they, they're not safe because the injector isn't safe. So that's where training is so important. This is a very question from Phyllis. I'm interested in finding out about PRP and PRF for under the eye. And do you want to comment on, on that? I don't know if you do PRP and if, if you don't use it, what filler would you think is a good choice for under the eye? It's such a difficult area. No, we, we use them both. Okay. Um, yeah, I have both. I have lots of centrifuges. Um, the difference is PRP is where you draw the blood and you put it into special tubes that are manufactured to have anticoagulants in them. And then there's a sponge in there that when you spin, spin it at really high um, speeds, that sponge actually pushes the red cells down to the bottom of the tube. 
and so that the what's on the top is your serum and platelets, but it's in a very fluid system. So the, the issue with PRP is that when you inject it, uh, or plate it out in the skin if you're doing a, a laser uh, treatment, is it, I don't think it stays around for very long because those platelets are free to move and um, because there's nothing keeping them there. Um, initially, this has to be your own platelets. You, yeah. This is your own blood that we're drawing. Um, with PRF, it's a much more gentle spin. And what they're doing is just pushing those cells down um, in, a, in a gentler way. And then the top layer of serum is more the serum with fibrin. And that's kind of really the, the clotting component of our skin that um, the platelets are floating around in this, this network, uh, this, this you know, fibrin clot. So you've got a very small window of, of, of opportunity then to you know, very carefully siphon that off and inject it into areas where you want to have those platelets um, stay around longer because that fibrin clot actually um, stays for up to a week mm. uh, once it, it uh, gels. But obviously you, you got to get it out of the tube and into the face before it becomes a gel because you can't inject you know, uh -huh. like jello otherwise. Um, I've had it done under my eyes and um, How often do you think, recommend that typically? Oh, every six weeks or so. Every, and how uh, many months or is there? And, a... and what, what we do is we kind of usually start them off with just pure PRF and um, get, let them adjust to that. Um, you're going to be swollen for about a week because that, that fluid actually kind of solidifies. And so you've just kind of got this bag under your eye that stays. And then we start introducing it with a, an HA at the same time. So we actually, we actually just mix them back and forth and then do a combined HA and um, PRF. I love to do it with Sculpture around the face because I think Sculpture back here is wonderful at the usual you strength. But that. down here, if you use full strength, you can often give people lumps. So what I do is we actually mix it 50-50 with PRF and then thread it no. in this area. There is. Can you explain what sculpture is for anyone in our on our audience who doesn't know the product? Sculpture is uh, L-polylactic acid, and it's actually a product that's uh, suture material is made of. It originally uh, came out and was FDA cleared for HIV-associated lipoatrophy. For people just got at one point in the whole history of HIV, the certain drugs just gave them this most amazingly gaunt faces, and what they realized was they were losing all their fat, and of course. The next kind of thought was, well, you know, if people are super skinny and they lose all the volume in their cheeks, isn't that the same thing? It is. So, you know, lipoatrophy is lipoatrophy. It just depends if it's age and, and you know, low weight or, you know, HIV that causes it. So we started using it for, you know, for building uh, uh, your own collagen. So we thread this through your, your uh, cheek in a very controlled um, method in a very controlled layer. And over a period of two months, it actually starts stimulating your own collagen. And I love Sculpture. It just gives people a really I think it's natural. Very good filler. I've never had it done personally, but I was on the team that launched it in the US market. And I've always thought the doctors who use Sculpture and mm. love it get amazing results. I mean, there's nothing like it, it's just a different concept to me. But I mm -hmm. think it's kind of misunderstood because it had problems early, early on in Europe. and everybody's changed the way they dilute it and the way they inject it, but right, right. really special product and for the right patient, it works one. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's, you know, there's a limit as to what you can do with sculpture. There are limits as to where you can place it, but um, you know, it's a, it's a great product for people who are really showing um, volume loss. And, and I mean, never, think, right? Yeah. And you never put it in lips. Yeah. You never put it around the eyes. Uh, there, are, there are just no fly zones, but it's it's a great product. Question here. Are you saying sculpture creates collagen growth? Yes. That's exactly what he's saying. Exactly. It's collagenesis. And the nice thing about sculpture is that those particles, like absorbable sutures, they they actually absorb and are gone in about two months. And the, the product, the, the um, collagen you built because of that hangs around for about two years. So, you know, I say it's about a two-year you get the fill you want and you've got about two years. I generally say to people, you want to probably look at once a year to do one vial just to keep the gas tank full. You know, don't let the volume totally deplete. The process, right? Because we're losing yeah. it. 
Right. I think it's an amazing product. I, I wish that more doctors um, were using it because I do think it does something that other products can't quite do. It's just a different mechanism of action, obviously. How would you mm -hmm. compare it to Radius, which is also a tissue stimulator? Do you use a lot yeah. of Radius practices? Uh -huh. I use a lot of Radius too. Um, radius starts off being more of a, a filler because, you know, there's it's a huge high G prime for Radius. So it's a great way to build cheeks up you know, to, to re redefine the jawline. I love it in the back of the hands. But the, the beauty is that as radius uh, continues to, to sit in the skin, it again will dissolve and disappear over time because it's calcium mm -hmm. uh, again. Um, and it, it uh, stimulates collagen in, in the process. Um, I'm using both of those products to, you know, to treat dimpling and, and volume loss and thighs and buttocks. And I think they both work fine. Um, but there's where you use hyper dilute products just to you know, right. do some gentle stimulation. Their decollete, it's amazing what you can do yeah. with someone's decollete to get rid of that crepiness and sagging. Um, so they're both great products. And of course, the third um, collagen stimulator is Bellafil. Mm -hmm. And Bellafil has the longest lifespan uh, yes. in the face. And, you know, that long lifespan actually scares some people off um, because they're like, well, what happens if I don't like it? Or what happens if it doesn't do what I want? You but I think, again, in the hands of a skilled injector, you get good results. Can you explain what Bellafil is for anyone who doesn't know the product? Because that's um, something not everybody's going to know about. Yeah, Bellafil, again, started off in Europe, um, got a bad rap in Europe because of some production Maybe. issues and some um, you know, consistency issues. Um, actually, started, it, was the, it was called Articol over there, came over here and was Artifil. And then they changed the name worldwide to Bellafil, but it's methyl methacrylate microspheres. So it's literally is very carefully manufactured microspheres. They're all exactly the same size that again are injected into your, your uh, dermis where the, all the collagen exists. And these actually kind of filter out, form a, a network of little particles that stimulate collagen. So it's a great way to, to uh, again, stimulate collagen uh, particularly in a more superficial area. So it's, it's great around the mouth. Uh, I love it in the cheeks, uh, temples. Uh, I'm starting to do a little bit in the back of the hands uh, and getting some good results there. Um, but it's, it's the most expensive, uh, but it also is the longest lasting. So if you kind of do the math, it's like, well, uh, it actually ends up being a cheaper way to go if it's the right product to use. I mean, what we're talking about is that armamentarium is expanding so much. But I appreciate that you know, you're so up to date, whereas I don't think everyone is. And I, I think that's really a point of difference. Like if you're going to experiment with some of these products, like I wouldn't want, uh, I wouldn't want to send our audience to any old person who's just starting to use some of these products, especially something like Bellafil. Like the, you need to choose a very experienced physician who ha knows how to use it properly and get great results. And, I think that's so important. There, there are an awful lot of people in the aesthetics industry with various training. So you want to check out the doctor you choose just to be sure that it's someone you're comfortable with and that you trust. I'm sure you, you would agree. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And how do you feel about video? I'm, I'm a big believer in video conferencing. I've been talking about it with doctors for years. And I'm so, I think now it's really finally come into its way. And I think there are so many benefits for patients as well as physicians. Do you offer video consultations in your practice? We do, we do. Uh, we do it for medical um, insurance covered issues. Uh, in fact, we just say, if you don't need to be touched, um, why run the risk of coming into the office? You know, let's just do it by, by video. So we actually have a Factor system set up for that. Doctor, right? Yeah. and. Um, then if we determine that we need to do something where a biopsy is necessary or touch is necessary, it's okay, then we'll schedule you to come in. Same way with um, cosmetic consults. My patient care coordinator is doing more and more online just to get a sense of, so what are we gonna treat here? And um, we kind of like to have it so that by the time you come in, um, a decision has been made to do something to touch you again. So that we're not doing a lot of face-to-face, long-winded conversations. Um, and it seems to be working pretty well. And I think patients are getting very comfortable with the concept of it as well. And it, it is a big time saving. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are afraid to go out. This way you can kind of keep up to date. And maybe you can't learn anything because you're not 
doing that touchy feely thing, but you can get a sense of what the patient would need to be able to give them a nice evaluation, I would think. Oh yeah, I mean, I, th I think aesthetics and uh, obviously in dermatology are both very visual specialties. And, you know, if you, as long as you've got good lighting, you've got, you know, high um, quality, uh, clear pictures, I, you can diagnose a lot just by, you know, looking at someone on, on a phone. And it's even, it's also educational for the patient, especially for, you know, someone who's new to aesthetics, getting up to speed on what the options mm -hmm. are and being able to talk to a physician without actually going into an office. I, I think we're going to see that that's going to be here to stay. I don't see that going away anytime soon. And I think it's actually expanded the opportunities for consumers to get exposure to doctors and learn more about aesthetics. And I mean, this field is changing. What's exciting about it, and I'm sure you feel the same way I do, is that we've got new stuff all the time coming in. And someone like you is able to evaluate and decide, is this safe for my patients? Is this something I want to offer? Or is this more of the same too? That's the other thing is that, that too. You know, there's so many systems now, that, you know, I call them wannabes, that there's the original, you know, great system that, you know, just is, has nailed it. And then you start seeing the wannabe um, systems coming from every company. So it gets confusing as to, so and what's the difference between this and that? You know, like, you know, it gets really complicated. And do, you, do, you have, do your estheticians do skin treatments? Are they also um, involved in recommending skincare and putting a regimen together? Are they doing peels or hydrofacial or what else, what else are you doing on that level? Uh, yes to all the above. Although I have to say we don't do hydrofacials. We've actually thought about bringing one in just because uh, I think uh, Allergan's done a great job of advertising. And so it's probably the most forefront of the market. Although my, my uh, experience with hydrofacials is I, I just felt like I was getting a wet, sloppy facial. Um, and I, I like the dermal infusion system so much better um, that Envy made. But now that's been bought. And I think, I think Allergan bought that one. Yes. And um, it's now called um, yes. Diamond Smooth, I think is the name of it. Oh. But, no, oh, Diamond Glow, that's right. And um, I just love the fact that you get much better cleansing of the skin. You know, you really extract the oil and debris from your skin with, because of all the suction. And then it, it does a better job of infusing stronger strength uh, serums into your skin. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so I love that system. And I, I people, I, the well, people who try one just, feels yeah. Good after those treatments, I think. You, you, yep. You, your skin you glow. Last, you feel like you've taken years off. It's, I mean, I don't feel like the result lasts very long, but it's not intended to. You need to go back and back. But I find it really a, a nice treatment. It, for yeah, it's, it's better than a facial. I mean, I've always said a facial feels good while all that stuff is on your skin. Yeah. But it's pretty much gone the, the minute you wash your face. Um, but yes, I mean, my estheticians um, certainly get, they've been trained and can get people to the right products for their skin conditions. Uh, they do chemical peels. Another very interesting peel that we're doing is it's more of a mask than a peel, actually, is Cosmolan. I don't know if you've oh, heard of it. You and should it's, audience. I know it from Europe. Yeah. It's, it's a uh, amazing product. It's, it's an amazing product <laughs> and particularly good for people with resistant melasma and dyschromia that just is not responding to other treatments. Um, it's a little expensive. Um, it has a fairly extensive take-home system, so, you know, you get lot to take home with you but I've been really impressed. Is it still that kind of yellow pasty? Yeah. Is it, yeah. it is kind of painted mm -hmm. on? But yeah. For, yeah you, you, uh, you look like you've been spackled um, yeah. and you walk out and it's left on for about eight to ten hours. All right right? Yeah. But the alternative is to slap on some definage and now your skin feels beautiful instantly. Um, I'm really excited about this Lux kit because I'm jealous um, about who is going to win it. And I think you're, you're really going to love it. Um, if anyone has any more questions, I would. Oh, here's Hannah. He's an endorsement. Hannah is an amazing esthetician. Go, Hannah. Um, I think we should wrap it up there. And I appreciate your time so much, Dr. Swangle. I know you, how busy you are and you've spent a full hour answering our questions. And we really, we really appreciate it. Um, so a few things to note. I'm sure you have more questions for Dr. Swangle. Um, I can talk to him forever. He's very active on social media. Please follow him on at refined MD. 
and visit his site, refinedmd.com. Lots of really good information on the site. Thanks so much. We're going to be selecting one lucky winner to get this beautiful Lux kit. Um, and I think I explained before what it is. I'm going to go through it again. Um, it has a value of $507, which is nice. Um, it's a beautiful gift. And the instructions are on this post, so you should be able to see it. You have until December 8th, 11, 59, 59 p.m. Uh, Pacific time to enter. Please follow the instructions. And the winner will be announced on Wednesday, December 9th. And it makes a wonderful gift for yourself or for anyone in your family, friends, your doctor, um, anyone will enjoy this gift. It's really very special, good for men and women. And the nicest part of it is you get a beautiful luxury silk uh, pillowcase that is so good for your hair. It makes a blowout last a little bit longer, which on me is not an easy thing to do. Um, so thank you so much, Dr. Swangle. Any any last comments for anyone? When is no, your office open and how do they get best to get in touch with you through social or on, on the website? What would you prefer? I think, um, both both those ways can, can happen. I think refinedmd.com is where they can start and there's very easily chat, make appointments and go from there. And there's, uh, we've had two new uh, today. web managers, social media people, and they have just done an amazing job to spruce it up make it easier to navigate and it's a it's a very sexy website that's that's uh, very easy to use really good information also i learned i learned a lot by spending a little bit of time on it thank you so yeah. much everyone um and stay tuned for another definage um ig live which is coming up um in another week or so thank you for your time and good luck with the lux kit yeah well thank, thank you so much wendy I'll, I'll see you on facebook very soon stay safe <laughs> you too. Take care. Okay. Bye.